I'd like to ask him what the audition process was like and how, of all the people across the world, he got headhunted for a HBO show. Um, the audition process was pretty, it, it was bizarre in the sense that it was, it was very uh, unoriginal. It was, uh, it was like a five minute audition. I actually had to come back from Irish college. We were trying to figure out the name of the grind school that they have in Kerry or something. I was there in fifth year and uh, I got, Bruno Parker, that was it. Anawa, <laughs> <laughs> uh, So I was there and uh, I think I got a call or an email or something about an audition for a TV show. And I, I was like debating whether to, to go up to Dublin for it, but I decided to do it. And uh, yeah, went to the audition, it was like five, five minutes long. Did like a short scene, it was the scene, the first scene I was in actually when I'm confronting Rob Stark for the first time and uh, yeah and then they just said well done and I left and I completely put out of my mind and then a few months later I got the call so it was a complete surprise to be honest it wasn't very sensational and uh, yeah that's the kind of so, banal story. So from the beginning you knew you were auditioning for Joffrey? Yes I did uh, yeah. Did you know the uh, sort of reputation he has from the books? Well, I mean, not really. I didn't know. I didn't know how much people hated the character. Uh, <laughs> uh, I knew, you know, I, I I read the first book and I read all the, you know, synopses online and stuff. So I knew he was he wasn't the the nicest character all around. Uh, but I didn't, yeah, I I I didn't really gauge the reaction of the book readers before the show came out. So I didn't know, yeah, the kind of vitriol people had for the character until. And so if you weren't starring in it, would it be the sort of show that you'd be interested in yourself? It's, it's hard to say actually, it's hard to say because I, uh, I'm ashamed to say I don't watch the show myself. Um, <laughs> just because it's, it's kind of awkward looking at yourself uh, acting and your, your friends like up, uh, acting as well. Um, uh, so uh, it was, it, it's odd in that respect, but I don't know. Yeah. Uh, there's one question that um, I found on uh, Reddit, which uh, um, who would you call the king of banter on set? The king of banter, I'd probably... Uh, can't say yeah, you. Like, can't say me, I'm the, the prince regent of banter, kind of lower. Um, I'd probably say uh, Alfie Allen is a bit of a partier. He'd be a banter king of sorts. Uh, uh, who does he play? He plays Theon. This guy, come on. Um, <laughs> For those who don't know. Yeah, he plays the character Theon uh, Greyjoy. And uh, yeah, he, he, he likes the old booze and he likes to go out partying. So he's always a, a fun, a fun kind of actor to have on set and to have a few chat wits and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, to date, what has been your uh, favorite scene to film? That's a diff, yeah. SM related scene. Any SM related <laughs> scene? Um, it's hard to say. It might be a bit of a cop-out answer, but I do enjoy filming every scene. Uh, well, there was that scene, and yeah, I suppose the, the one involving two uh, ladies of the night. Uh, <laughs> that, uh, as you one can imagine, was rather awkward to film, but, you know, a story to tell my grandchildren when they <laughs> get a bit older, yeah. The future uh, in-laws. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, another question I've robbed from Reddit is, uh, is there anything that Joffrey wouldn't do? He you wouldn't reckon? do yeah. in, in his life. Um, I don't know. I mean, apart from, yeah, because he can, he's, he's kind of, he can do whatever he wants, you know. So uh, I suppose do something for the poor, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He'd never really do that unless he's forced to by his mother or somewhere <laughs> the like. Yeah. Not the most altruistic fella. Moving on from that, uh, yeah. obviously you're nothing like your character in real life, but what I wanted to ask you is, there, <laughs> that's, that's subjective, uh, but, uh, something I wanted to ask you, is there anybody on, uh, on the set that you'd actually compare very like to their character? There are actually, yeah. There are a few. I mean, like Peter Dinklage would be quite similar to his character Tyrion in the sense that he's very kind of like, he's very witty and he's got a very dry sense of humour and he's also very intelligent. So in that sense, I'd, I'd, I'd compare the two. Um, who else? I mean, certainly Charles Dance, who plays Tyron, uh, Tywin, in, like just in real life, he walks into the room and he's like this 
<laughs> building of a man. He just shakes her hand. Hello, darling. How are you today? And he's like, oh, I love you. Uh, <laughs> so uh, he's he's quite kind of intimidating and quite. He's like he oo he oo uh, oozes confidence, just like his character Tywin. So those two people, I'd say, would be quite similar to their characters. Mm. And uh, something I've been fairly concerned about, but rumor has it that you're considering stopping mainstream acting after uh, the Game of Thrones is finished. Oh, your part in the Game of Thrones is finished. Mm. Uh, why would that be? That's true, yeah. Um, I mean, it, it really comes down to just uh, not uh, kind of deriving as much enjoyment as I did from acting as I used to. You know, I started acting when I was eight and really, really loved it, you know, and all I wanted to be was an actor when I grew up. But for some reason, I don't know, it, it, it became kind of a bit uh, mechanical and less, uh, less kind of passion, passionate for me when I started Game of Thrones. I don't think it's got anything to do with the way they film it, but I think when, uh, when it became less of a recreation and more of a, more of a profession, it kind of put more pressure on the acting itself and made it a tiny bit less enjoyable. Yeah. At this point, though, I'd like to bring up your, your own acting troupe, which would be the, the Collapsing Horse Theatre Group. Could you tell us about that? Yeah. This is something that uh, maybe a lot of the audience wouldn't know, but uh, Jack is regularly putting on, producing and partaking in plays around Dublin. Yeah, well, well I've co-founded a, uh, a theatre company called Collapsing Horse Theatre Company in 2011 with some friends. And uh, we've put on, I think, three or four shows. Mainly, they're mainly like kind of kids' theater uh, puppet shows, um, which are really fun to make. We, 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 we put on a, a more serious adult show uh, if in the Fringe Festival in the Samuel Beckett, which was our kind of coming of age. But uh, I, think we'll, I think we'll return to, uh, to the puppetry because it's more fun to do. Um, yeah, and we have like a civic, uh, we have a, a residency in the civic next year, the Civic Theatre in Tala which means we can go and make uh, loads of fun theatre there. Um, yeah, it's really exciting. We are the business society, and I have to ask you, we, you did produce a couple of the plays. Mm. And how did you find the business behind it? And uh, what sort of business were you doing? Uh, with I, who and, yeah. and how? I, I found the business really boring, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was horrible. I usually do the kind of, I usually do the menial tasks of producing, like, you know, collecting programmes and, uh, you know, that kind of uh, hard labor, you know. Uh, but uh, for the, our second uh, show, Human Child, I kind of took the reins in terms of the budget and, and liaising with the, with the theaters and paying, paying all the actors and, and uh, figuring out where we can rehearse and that kind of thing. Um, so I just found it, a, yeah, I'm just not the kind of guy that likes sitting and sending emails all day. I don't get a huge, a, a huge kick out of it. But in terms of uh, what I did, I mean, the, I suppose that the most enjoyable thing was kind of liaising with the journalists and trying to get publicity for the show um, in order to, to, sell, to sell tickets. And uh, that was kind of fun because you had to kind of pitch, uh, pitch uh, you know, a kind of a positive a uh, description of, of the play itself and an interesting angle on it that the journalist could write more about. So that was slightly creative, so I enjoyed that aspect. Um, but uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't see business in my future, so to speak. <laughs> uh, just going a bit back and forth, I'd just like to go back to Geoffrey. Um, there's, there's two questions <coughs> I wanted to ask, and uh, the internet really wants to ask you as well. And it's, which part of yourself in real life would you relate the most to Geoffrey? <coughs> Ah, it's uh, difficult. I, I suppose it's not the incest. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm trying to think. Uh, well, I am technically a king. I'm the king of Ireland. I don't know if you <laughs> if you got that memo. Uh, no. Um, I don't think I really relate to anything he does, to be honest. I mean, his main kind of hobbies are going out hunting and that kind of thing, and. I've never really, I do a bit of fishing, I don't know. <laughs> if that counts as shooting a boar with an arrow. Yeah, I fish, therefore I'm like Joffrey, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, and what part would you most empathize with, with poor Joffrey? You know, I think he's found himself in a, yeah. well he is evil at heart, I think he's found himself in a horrible position to be in. I'd empathize a lot with him, to be honest, uh, in everything he does, because first of all, I think in kind of a, a neuroscientific level, I don't think incest is great for kind of the frontal lobe and kind of moral centers. So uh, I empathize with it. It's not his fault uh, in that sense that he's kind of this malevolent uh, king. I think it's partly a genetic thing. And then also it's a, it's a contextual thing. 
in the sense that you know his father didn't really love him and his mother was overprotective and he was told from day one that he could do whatever he wanted so it's kind of you know if anyone here if they were put into that context I think they turn out like Joffrey perhaps so uh, myself included so I think uh, I can empathize him with in that sense that I wouldn't say he's, he's inherently uh, immoral or evil but simply the product of his of his setting in this context. And, um, you know, after all this acting is finished, and, uh, where, where would you see yourself in 10 years' time? It's tough. I, I literally have no idea. Literally have no idea. I mean, um, I, I'd, I'd probably do, a, a, you know, a master's degree of some kind in, in the near future. <coughs> um, I kind of thought about perhaps pursuing kind of a, a, a you know, a bigger postgraduate degree after that. Um, so if I follow that kind of route, then I'd you know, perhaps be, you know, in a lectureship somewhere, but I don't think I'll do that, but I'm not sure. Yeah, no idea. Where would you be in 10 years' time? <laughs> Flip it around. Good uh, interview technique. You'll see me on HBO, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, one thing I remember reading is uh, you were thinking of studying a PhD in ancient Hebrew. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure any of the audience would really put, uh, you know, King Joffrey as uh, an ancient, ancient Hebrew. Does anyone know any ancient Hebrew here? You know Hebrew? Modern Hebrew. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Everyone knows modern Hebrew, you know? <laughs> no, yeah, it's bizarre. It's, I mean, it, it was just part of my uh, theology course uh, in Trinity that you could either study like ancient or um, New Testamental Greek, um, Arabic or ancient Hebrew. And I don't know why, I just decided to choose ancient Hebrew. And they're like, it was just me in the class and this amazing <laughs> lecture. So it, made, it really motivated you to learn. And uh, for some reason, I just really enjoyed it, yeah. Uh, and there's still loads to learn about ancient Hebrew. They're finding scrolls all the time, so it'd be an interesting... <laughs> it's an interesting point of research, if I were to go into it. Yeah. And uh, finally, before the q and I want to hit you with uh, ten questions I've robbed from uh, inside the actor's studio. Yes, uh, go for it. We just uh, we bomb on through them. I'd like to hear your favourite word. Uh, it's real insightful. Very insightful. Yeah. This is a word I found out recently, which is uh, crepuscular. Which means, does anyone know what that means? I don't really know what it means. It mean, I, I think it's, it's like the adjective describing twilight. So like a, a, a crepuscular sky would be a correct usage. <laughs> now I'm interested to hear your least favorite word. We discussed this today and I'm even revolted saying it in front of people. But panties. <laughs> this is gross. And explain to me why. I don't want to explain why, to be honest. <laughs> it's just pff, panties, like it's gross. Following from that, uh, <laughs> what turns you on creativity, uh, <laughs> creatively, uh, spiritually, and emotionally? Um, it's a tough question. I mean, I do, uh, I do like to do some writing now and again, creative writing, and uh, um, just sitting in a park or whatever, just like, or uh, sitting by a sunset. Uh, I'd have to say just, yeah, a crepuscular sky would inspire me. <laughs> Real deep. Real yeah. Deep. And what's your turn off? My turn off, um, I don't know, I think, uh, I suppose, uh, w I mean, one, one would be kind of sycophancy, kind of people flattering you or being um, patronizing to you. That kind of turns me off, don't usually like that. And then you use your favorite curse word. My favorite curse word, I don't know. Um, something in ancient Hebrew. I'm trying to think. I think the only bad word in ancient Hebrew I know is feces. <laughs> but I don't even know that that well. It's just like dirt. It's kind of gross. I don't even know. I don't even know. I just know it, there's a story in which a king is killed on the toilet and he shits himself. <laughs> King Ehud. Uh, my, f my least, uh, my, 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 dirt, my dirtiest word. Uh, Stop a sentence of swear words for the... Maybe, I mean, perhaps, perhaps the C word. I'm sorry. <laughs> I like saying that sometimes. What word? Crap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, part of the ten questions, what noise would you love? Uh, noise I love. Um, the noise of freshly cut grass. <laughs> yeah. Noise that you hate? Um, noise that I hate. Uh, I don't know. Probably just someone crying. 
Right? Right? Yeah? Really sad. And then the, the real deep one is um, if heaven exists and you end up there, uh, mm -hmm. what would you hope God says to you? I would hope he would say um, something like, I'm so sorry, I've got so much explaining to do. <laughs> That's brilliant. Thank you so much, Jack, for the interview. Thank you. Now, I'm going to take my seat, and we're going to invite the floor for a quick uh, Q&A. Uh, go to town on uh, poor Jack. Uh, Jack, choose the, uh, choose the questions. You're gonna uh, do I get to choose the questions? Oh, yeah, Amazing. Oh, sorry, choose the people to pose the questions. Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> that man in the red sweater has a, has a question. <laughs> <laughs> or to the right here, that guy does. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I play a little boy in Batman, if you didn't know. Um, <laughs> uh, a similar thing, yeah. I mean, nothing too interesting about it. I just went to, to an audition, um, and I think I went to two or three, and yeah, I just remember my, my, my dad coming in, I was watching TV, and told me I got the part, so jumped up with joy. So, uh, but I can't remember too much about the audition process. I think I was about eight or nine, so yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> 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 okay. Any other keys, you sir? Yep. Yeah, what's it like being like an unknown actor when you started off and now there's a lot of famous actors that are coming in and out of the show? It's it's very surreal, yeah. It's it's very, very surreal to kind of uh to have perhaps you know a, you know a, a very famous actor in a scene with you and you're in a kind of a, a higher authority in the scene, you have to kind of talk down to them. Uh, it feels it feels very bizarre. You kind of feel like apologising afterwards, <laughs> but uh, it's 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 one of the greatest benefits for me of doing Game of Thrones to meet these incredible actors like like Charles Dance or um, uh, who is the actor who he wrote uh, Sherlock? I think he's going to be in the latest Mark season. Gattis. Mark Gaddis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never met him, but uh, to kind of be uh, associated in a, in a show with him is pretty cool. Yeah, it's quite surreal. Fun reading the, the rest of the books? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, the honest answer is no. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I find them quite hard to read. I don't know. There's a lot of names in them I can't keep track of. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah. Who do you hang out with most on the set? Uh, it's a good question. Uh, it, it, it really depends on, um, on the scenes I'm filming that season, which is kind of sad in a way, like for the first one or two. I would, I would hang out with Rory McCann, who plays the Hound loads, because he was just in all my scenes. And uh, yeah, we would like be, be really close. And then his character kind of diverged from my character storyline. And uh, we don't really see each other anymore. Uh, but um, in general, you know, like uh, Lena Headey and Peter Dinklage and Sophie Turner, um, and now Natalie Dormer. Uh, I really like hanging out with the, those guys, but it really is just uh, proportionate to the amount of time you spend with the with the actors. You know, you're kind of stuck in a in a room with them for 12 hours a day. You're bound to get along, you know. So, yeah. yeah. Have you seen a YouTube montage of you being slapped for 10 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> uh, No, I haven't seen that. Oh, I can imagine how it would go, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't think I need to see it. I think the description suffices. <laughs>
Yeah. Check that out. Thanks. <laughs> Um, <laughs> well, I can tell you, I can tell you that I think that he has, that he has a, an inkling, you know. Um, there's a scene, I think, in, in uh, season two or three in which he kind of confronts his mother about it and he kind of like, does, um, does Robert have any other sons or daughters that I know about, um, that, that I don't know about? So I think he does have an inkling, um, but as far as I know, it's pretty unknown, yeah. And what did you do with your first paycheck? <laughs> <laughs> Put it in the bank. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Spend it on a cat. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Um, what is the craziest thing a pound has done to you? Or at me, yeah. Um, pardon me? Fan website. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. There is a there is a fan website that uh, was brought to my attention, which seems to kind of just feature my face with kind of Photoshop flower garlands on my head. So I think I look quite good in them. Might might do like a cool Carla Levine thing. Popular culture. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's a good question. Um, probably Howdor, you know. You guys are good. <laughs> you just turn up, it's an easy day's work, you know. <laughs> Got a small kid in your back. Just say Howdor, it's perfect. Get paid for it. Yeah. Um, I'm actually from Croatia. Oh. Um, I only filmed in Dubrovnik. I, yeah, I, I was there for about two weeks, a few weeks ago. Um, and I agree, it's a beautiful country. Uh, I think they, they also film in Split as well, just around Split. Um, but it's mainly in Dubrovnik, around the kind of the, the famous battlements. Uh, but I love Dubrovnik, yeah. It's a beautiful, beautiful city. <coughs> Croatia is a beautiful country. Is Daenerys a hot person? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. She's, I've, <laughs> I've only met her once, to be honest, uh, so I can't say, but uh, she's a beautiful person inside. <laughs> um, I'll ring him now, I'll see, I don't know, Kate, okay, no. Uh, I'm not sure, he's another actor I don't really get to chat to too often, but I'm not even sure if he's been to Dublin before, so I might convince him to come to Dublin and then baby step it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't have a girlfriend. No, I don't. I don't. I'm free. <laughs> I'm a free man. You can check out my uh, my dating website profile. <laughs> Joffrey loves loves the babes. <laughs> yes, thank you. I was going to say that. I am straight, but I thought that was quite a gender normative question. But uh, no, I don't have a boyfriend. Thank you for asking. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, how do you manage to be so despicable in the show? <laughs> yeah, just... <laughs> I don't know. It's a good question. Um, I mean, a lot of it, to be honest, a lot of it comes from the character itself. You know, I think any, any actor worth their salt with the really good writing and the... Uh, and the, and the actors acting opposite you create the character. You know, it's not just, it's not just your own... Um, ability, uh, and also you know the the whole the costume and the crown, and uh, it's not just it's not just the actor that kind of creates the character. So um, I'm helped a lot. That's why it's nice to Nice to meet you. <laughs> the true, the king of diabetes himself. <laughs>
Oh, sorry, can you? Sorry. What would you miss most about filming the show? I know it sounds a bit cheesy, but definitely, definitely the people. You know, definitely uh, the cast and all the crew. That you know, you, you spend months on a time with for that that you know that, that I've known for about five years. Uh, so um, it's it's a really really. Uh, I think I'll, I'll, I'll miss when I do kind of depart. I will miss that the most um, because, as I said earlier, you know, you spend just twelve hours just hanging around in a kind of a green room uh, with these people all day and you really get to know them just by just nattering for the sake of nattering just to starve boredom uh, so um, it'll be a sad farewell to the people mm -hmm. yep you there Yeah, there have actually. There's the Dan and Dave, the two creators of the show, love pranking the cast. They get a real kick out of it. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, well, they did one to Alfie Allen, I think, in the second season, where they wrote a scene in which his character dies, and uh, uh, they gave it to him, and he was like really, really upset, and was like, "This is bullshit! You know, I can't believe this. It's like read the books for once, you know." Uh, <laughs> So that's one. Um, I'm try there was one they did recently, actually, on Gwendolyn Christie, um, who plays um, Brienne, uh, which is they they wrote incredible like Photoshop skills. They 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 made up a fake New York Times article in which uh, it describes like her being really rude to a fan, and like it was all about her being a bitch in real life and stuff. <laughs> and and like David the dire the the creator was just scrolling down one day. He was like. Gwen, what, what's up with this? And she was like, I don't even remember that. I don't even remember that. This is <laughs> bullshit. And she was like ringing up her publicist and stuff. It was very funny. So yeah, Dan and Dave are good for the old pranks, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. What's it like working with uh, George R. R. Martin? Does he have a big input into the series? I think he does, yeah. I mean, uh, he does. He writes, I think he writes one episode a season. Uh, I don't really work with him a huge amount. He doesn't really come to set so much. But I think he really does have a big, a big influence on just the kind of tone of the whole piece. I think he's an executive producer or something like that. So uh, I, I, I've only met him once or twice, um, but he's a, a really, really nice man. Very, uh, very unassuming and very jolly <laughs> in every way. Yeah. Um, do you have any stories of an experience where someone's failed to distinguish between you and the group? Thankfully, no. No, yeah, thankfully not. Um, no, everyone, I mean, yeah, I, 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 I get asked that sometimes and I'm always kind of baffled the idea that some people can't distinguish like fiction from reality, but I mean, it's never happened to me, thankfully. Uh, so, no, because if they did, it kinda, I'd, I'd be in danger. Yeah. <laughs> you said that you were into creative writing, mm. what sort of writing have you done? Um, well, I kind of, I help out with the writing for the theatre company, I mentioned earlier, Collapsing Horse Theatre Company. <laughs> We kind of have a main writer for each piece we do, and then uh, all the members kind of uh, um, combine their forces to um, to help with the plot and help with the world creation, that kind of thing. So that would be the the extent of my creative writing. But uh, I want to do more. Yeah. 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 Um, it's fairly well known that like actors use past experiences to help them out with scenes and you know make them more authentic and stuff. So why can't your friends are <laughs> pissing. <laughs> <laughs> can we can we get him thrown out? He knows too much. <laughs> Talk to you after. You need to be you've been talking to the wrong people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> For the final time, yes, yes, several. Oh yeah. Yeah, um, maybe even Kit, yeah, yeah, Kit, yeah, because I've met him a few times, he seems like a really cool guy, so I'd like to act with him, perhaps. Um, but there's, there's too many, you know, you want to work with every actor on the show, there's too many characters. <laughs> um, uh, but he'd be one, for sure, yeah, he seems like a really nice guy, even though he broke his leg, I don't know if you heard about that. They had to delay filming for ages because he drunkenly climbed his wall after a night out and broke his leg. <laughs> the Muppet. <laughs> yeah, 
Well, first of all, I'm sorry it was emotional. <laughs> um, second of all, I did have to hold back tears for like, I was like, no, I don't want to do it. I tried to talk with the writers to try and get the whole plot changed. <laughs> What's that? Somebody else do it. Somebody else do it, or, you know, just put them on a boat, put them somewhere safe. They didn't buy it, but uh, I was pretty torn up about it, I must say. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it is true. Um, kind of not, not that uh, consciously, so to speak, um, but more, the more and more I acted uh, the character, I kind of realized that there were similarities between the two. Just I think because there are similarities between the characters, you know, they're both kind of uh, petulant and egotistical and show offy. And, you know, Yaqueen Phoenix is just an incredible actor, so I suppose I look up to him and that performance, you know. Yeah. Did I ever get to hug Batman? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a cool <laughs> dude. He's a cool dude. That isn't, that's all real pecs as well. They just kind of exude through the suit. But, yeah, it's beautiful. Beautiful man. Yeah. Um, well, I loved, I loved the West Wing when it was on. I don't think I would suit any character in it, but uh, I'm kind of re-watching the season at the moment because I love it. And I also love uh, Sherlock, the BBC Sherlock. It's very cool. Uh, but again, I don't think I don't think there'd be a part in that. Yeah, yeah, sure. Final question. That lad. <laughs> Look at that moustache. <laughs> Go on, stand up and show them your moustache. <laughs> That's a one-day moustache. When, when did you to play with the uh, collapsing voice? Well, thank you for asking. Um, <laughs> well, we're going to be performing uh, one of our shows, Human Child, in the Baburo International Kids Festival in October, I think October 17th. Um, so if you're in Galway uh, in mid-October, head over. And then um, I don't think we have any other shows coming up because we just, we just did one in the Fringe Festival. But as I say, we have a residency in the Civic Theatre, so we'll be putting on... Uh, some kind of show in the near future. Uh, yeah. That's it.